it's, it's well established here on Something Cool News that we have followed the Trevor Redmond story uh, in detail, very closely, uh, since it began in March uh, of 2006 until its end uh, in August 2007. Uh, Trevor Redmond's walk across Canada and back across Canada to raise funds for cancer research. Uh, I think his story is amazing. I think it's always been amazing, and I think that uh, it's a real travesty that the Canadian mainstream press did not cover the story uh, to the same degree that we did. I mean, uh, we, we have like like two staff members here at Something Cool News, and I'm one of them. And uh, we were able to do uh, this story, uh, I think, a lot of justice. Uh, so we were able to do what most of the Canadian journalists were not able to do in covering the story, uh, and it's evidenced by the fact that Trevor just gave up. He quit when he realized that he was never going to get the media coverage he needed to make a substantial difference. He wanted to make a dollar per step. Uh, he wanted to raise a dollar per step for each Canadian uh, there and back. Uh, it didn't quite work out. Uh, he made two cents uh, per step. Uh, two cents for every step that he took, uh, which amounted to $29,000 in the end, which is great. I mean, that's $29,000 that um, uh, he didn't have before. But what he wanted, when it was all said and done, was something closer to $30 million, which would have been an amazing accomplishment for cancer research. He would have donated that entire amount uh, to the Princess Margaret Hospital in Toronto instead of keeping it for himself, which makes him an amazing man, uh, an amazing story, hauling behind him this 200-pound this trailer uh, up down the Coquihalla Highway through the winter in the Maritimes and back again across the country. I mean, most people who do, who do uh, cross-country uh, journeys like the Purse for the Cure guys, or even like people like Terry Fox, they, they, did, they did it one way. It was from uh, one point to another, and that was it. Uh, and that is commendable on its own. That's pretty amazing. But Trevor was the only one I've ever heard of that was willing to walk back across the country, and he received uh, no media coverage of any significance, uh, except for the Weather Network. Except for the Weather Network. They were there for him. Uh, he, he received no significant media coverage for his entire trip, with the exception of one little tiny alternative news website called Something Cool News. That was it. Evidently, he approached the situation the wrong way, because there was some guy who was going to be bicycling across Canada that already has media coverage. Look at this. Right here it's in the Sunday province. Father cycles for a cure. Goal is to raise more than one million for research. Research, okay? Not for cancer, but for diabetes. An amazing story. This one father, uh, his daughter was diagnosed with, di uh, with diabetes, and he wanted to do everything he could to find a cure by the time he was 18, or she was 18. So he says, you know what? I'm going to hit the road, and I'm going to bicycle across Canada in an attempt to raise funds, uh, hopefully more than $1 million, for Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation. So what does he do? He uh, gets some front page coverage. This is what he gets. Uh, well, I shouldn't say front page. It actually is it, that's wrong. It's on page A17, which is uh, not bad. I mean, considering the front page is about uh, uh, a video game, I mean, page A17 is not to scoff at in the province. But there he is. And you can be sure that if it's running here in the province, uh, owned by Ken West, this article is being published in other newspapers across Canada. Okay? This is an amazing story. Uh, there's no doubt about it. It's a human interest story. It deserves to be in the newspaper. But what also deserved to be in the newspaper was Trevor Redmond's story, because he wasn't biking across the country. You can bike across the country probably here. Uh, they're going to be doing it. There's three of them. They're going to be cycling 24 hours there in three-hour shifts. So they're not even biking the whole way. They're just taking stages. One guy bikes. They get off. Another guy takes over. They get off. A third guy takes over. So it's not just one guy that's doing it. It's three guys that are biking across Canada. Okay, they're figuring, uh, it says in here, they're hoping to get some uh, volunteers in four RVs. They're hoping to get people all across the country to help them out uh, and to do a 6,000-kilometer uh, trip, and they're hoping to get it done uh, in pretty short order. Uh, Trevor did the same thing, except he did it by himself, with no one taking over for him, with no one that would take shifts for him. He did it by himself, walking, and it took him damn near a year to walk across Canada pulling a trailer. He did not, at any time, at any time in his trip, did he ever receive an article this nice by any member of the Canadian press. Not one institution uh, was willing to give him something like this. Even the Toronto Star uh, kind of shut them off. And the CBC, the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, declined his request for an interview on more than one occasion. 
the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. And then I find that the Vancouver province is jumping all over this story. What's interesting is the Vancouver province knew about the Trevor Redmond story. And you might be asking, how can you possibly know that? Well, I know that Trevor certainly tried to call them and get information before his trip started. When he was leaving Vancouver, they didn't seem interested then. But I also know because the reporter for this story here is a young lady named Glenda. And I can't quite pronounce her last name, so I think it's Lumez or something. I'm not entirely certain. But her name is Glenda. I've met her. I've spoken with her. And I told her about the Trevor Redmond story because she's a really cool reporter. I really like her. I respect her work. I said, hey, if you really want a great story, there's a Trevor Redmond story you could talk about. You know, even though it's a exclusive content of something cool news and I have a monopoly on the story, I don't care about that. I want to share it out there, get it out there so everyone can learn about the story. She knows about the story, presumably pitches it to her editors who tell her, oh, that's boring. I mean, what's guy all he's doing is walking across Canada and they go with the story about these three guys, three guys who are biking across Canada. Now, maybe I'm just getting ornery here. Maybe my old age is starting to affect me, and I need to settle down and have some Triscuits or something. But, you know, I'm pissed off. Trevor Redman did something that was really amazing, got completely ignored by the mainstream press in this country, and gets uh, and people who were just biking across the counter with two other people with 20 volunteers and four RVs, they can somehow get this, this amazing article in here, and they get the media transfer. Trevor Redman, who just tried to make a, 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 an impact and tried to raise money for cancer research, uh, got basically told to fuck off. We, we don't care about your story. It's boring. Nothing else is going on. Some of the reporters he encountered on his way across actually asked if his story was legitimate, if he was telling the truth, because they thought his story just sounded fake. This is the Canadian press for us. Uh, so, yeah, um, there's no way around it. This bugs me. This annoys me to no end. Uh, I, I attempted to call Linda earlier this afternoon to find out uh, how she found out about the story. And unfortunately, I got her voicemail, so I don't know if, in fact, uh, she uh, was approached. If uh, the, the, these guys sent out a kick-ass media package, a press release, and the province said, hey, let's get on that. Or if they somehow found out about the story by themselves. But here's the other thing. If you want to follow along the story and see how it develops, the public can track the ride's progress at theprovince.com or the personal website, teamh2v.com. So, you want to go to the province website, they'll give you updates on this amazing journey. They didn't give the same courtesy to Trevor Redmond when he was walking across the country. The only place you get updates about that was his own website, or Something Cool News was providing updates on a regular basis at all. So, you know, here they are. They're going to, on, the, on the province's website, this huge website with tons of traffic, they're going to offer... Updates and, and track the ride's progress. Isn't that nice of the province to do that for these great guys to help out this young daughter, 12-year-old uh, daughter who's born with type 1 diabetes? Okay, This is no way uh, an attack upon the father's ambitions or the state of his daughter. I think it's amazing. And you know what? If the province didn't get over the story, I would be honored to do it myself. But since the province has already got it, there's no need for me to do it because more people are going to read it here. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, that uh, they, this is a perfect example of how the Canadian press completely, 100%, utterly failed Trevor Redmond. And by that, by extension, they failed the Canadian public who did not know that he was out there walking across the country alone, isolated, almost getting killed by flying debris on several occasions, and getting seriously sick on his way. They did not know he was out there trying to help them. And I hold the Canadian media, the mainstream press, responsible for this complete and utter failure. And when I see articles like this, it makes me shake my head. And it proves once again that uh, you know I'm doing something that's very important. And uh, I hope, I hope that someone uh, re sees this editorial and can give me an explanation for why the Canadian mainstream media uh, is so adept at failing its own readers.